Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Johnson. I am a marketing specialist for well, Century 21 Corporate. Um, I mainly focus um, on our workplace platform and social media content, so content creation, um, getting you started on how to post. Um, so this session is gonna be more or less on um, social media for beginners. Um, you have social media, you just don't know what kind of content to post or you don't know how to create it. Um, so we have some tools that are already, um, they're ready for you to use. Um, we have content for you that's all ready to go. Um, so just kind of walking you through how to find that and um, some best practices on social. So who here is on social? <laughs> everyone, perfect, or mostly everyone. Great. Um, so did you know 74% of small businesses are using social media? This is a really popular way to get your name out there, connect with customers, um, and connect with your local market. So we kind of feel social media is a way to get you out into the eyes of your peers and out in the eyes of your community to kind of position you as your, uh, the local market expert. So why social? You want to make more money. Who doesn't? Um, generate leads. This is a great way to find customers and find uh, your home buyers and sellers. Building relationships. Um, a lot of people do communicate with their customers through social media, so it's a great way to kind of get to know somebody. And you want to go where your customers are. 97% um, of home buyers uh, use the internet in their home search, which I'm surprised not it's not 100%, but um, this is a great way. Uh, you need to get yourself out there on online, on social, to, to get those leads and to get that, uh, that community base. So who's doing it right? Um, I kind of pulled some examples of some Century 21 agents and brokers who are using social in a great way. Um, I don't know if you all are familiar with um, Jerry Sobolski, Jordan Dennis, um, CEO Sandoval. A lot of these agents, uh, they put themselves out there every single day. This is a, a main way that they get customers and build their clientele. Um, so if you ever want to check any of their pages out, I could definitely give you their handle and kind of see um, what they're doing and what they're not doing. So you might ask yourself, how do I get to be at that level? Um, we do have a monthly calendar every month that comes out um, with some content ideas to get you started on social. So I have a QR code here if you're interested in taking a look for yourself on your phone, but I'll also pull it up here. Um, basically, here's some snapshots of the calendars themselves. Uh, the top one is a layout of an example of the month um, with some content and suggested dates. And the bottom here is a, a screenshot of what each page will look like. So let me pull one up so we can walk through it. So these, like I said, come out every single month. There's a broker version and an agent version. So depending on which version you want to use, I can let you know where to find both of them. Um, so essentially in this slideshow, here is a snapshot of the month ahead, looking forward, with some suggested dates of when to post each, uh, each piece of content. Definitely do not need to follow this to a T. It's just something to kind of get you started if you don't know how to start uh, using social. So each one of these pages is broken down um, into one specific post. Uh, we walk through each single each post for the month. Um, over here, you'll see the post copy. So all you have to do, really, we wanted to make this a plug and play. So it's a copy and paste um, right onto your social media. So we have the suggested date over here to the left, the placement. The flight and budget will refer to if you wanted to pay for advertising. So if you're not paying for advertising on Facebook, you can uh, disregard that. Um, and then the creative right down here. So you just need to copy and paste and post it onto your social. We also have some recommended hashtags at the bottom. And each one of these will highlight the different pieces of content for 
uh, that specific day. So if I can get down to the bottom here. We also have some templates that are highlighted, um, which you can find on 21 online in the brand studio. Um, so here, if you're part of Find Home and Estates, uh, there's some templates here. Um, the abandonment campaign post, uh, the, that's referring to the commercial that we released in 2019. Um, that you can customize and add your own um, office, your name, your, your phone number, um, in case you wanted to use that as part of your advertising. Um, and this slide, uh, this deck is really just a great way to uh, get you started on, on social. Um, we also have some Facebook best practices if you're interested in um, doing some paid advertising. On Facebook, we have some links here. If you do have questions about uh, Facebook advertising, we definitely recommend reaching out to your uh, your Facebook, uh, the help page on Facebook, they can definitely uh, get you kind of started there. Um, and then some media recommendations for, for social. So like I said, each one, each one of these calendars are released at the first of the month, or I'm sorry, uh, the 15th of every month. And um, that's just a really great way to get you started on social if you, if you do not know uh, have any content or don't know how to post or don't know what to post, um, we definitely kind of have it all laid out for you. Um, workplace. So these calendars, like I mentioned, they're released on the 15th of every month. Um, the agent version is posted in the Go Social group on Workplace, and the broker version is posted on uh, Broker Connect on Workplace. They're also included in the Asset Library on Brand Studio, and they're also included in the In Case You Missed It email blast that gets sent out at the end of the month. So if you're ever looking for any of them, you can also, I'll put my contact information in here, you can also email me, I can send it to you, um, or you can look in these four places for it. So social this week, um, in reference to the calendars that I just talked about, we do have an email blast that goes out weekly that takes each one of the social posts that are on that calendar into an email version. So if you um, might be overwhelmed with looking at a big calendar, we have an email version that breaks it down by week with each post and copy, as well as some social tips. Um, so these change every week. Um, depending on, uh, it relates to the calendar, like I said. So this is a little bit, it's another reminder to kind of get you, hey, did I post this week? Did I schedule my post for this week? Um, if you do want to be added to this email list, I have the email up here, which I'll put up again at the end. It's communications at century21.net. So I can definitely add you to that list. Um, like I said, it's every Monday at 6 a.m. it gets deployed. So some paid media approaches. This is in reference to Facebook um, paid advertising. So there's three types of ads that you can choose from. Um, we have lead ads, which in my opinion is uh, the best one out of the three, just because you're paying to get leads sent directly to you. Um, it definitely puts your posts out there, it boosts them, and it gets you those leads. A link ad is um, something that it just clicks, or when someone clicks on it, it goes right to your website or right to a website. And an awareness ad is more or less just a social billboard, as I like to call it. Um, it kind of just gets your name out there. It doesn't link to anything. It doesn't tell them much information. It's just a piece of content. So this is referencing the Facebook ads if you did want to boost any of those posts that I uh, just went through. Um, and here are some best practices for your social media. So if you have a social profile account and you know it's not updated and you want it to be in tip-top shape, I have some tips for you uh, to kind of get your profile on the right foot. You definitely want a professional and clear profile picture. So anything with a light background, good lighting, um, just something to make it inviting and show your, you know, your followers that you're, you know, you're welcoming, you're, um, you're ready to, to help them. You just want something that looks like you're friendly. 
which I know everyone is, but. <laughs> Um, adding your contact information into your bio. So I have an, an example here on, um, this is an Instagram example, Stacy Feltman. She has her website, her phone number, and her, uh, her website, as well as her name. So this is a great way to have people see all of your information in one spot instead of messaging you or trying to reach out to you to try to find some sort of communication with you. Having everything in your bio is a great way to get people to contact you. Including your website in your profile. Um, so we have Adam Clemens. He has his website that I've highlighted here. Stacy in the previous example had her website. Um, this is an example from Facebook in the about information. Um, J Jordan has his uh, website there as well as on his Instagram. So you definitely want to include your website and get that out in people's faces. Next, your office location. Um, it seems kind of silly, but a lot of people don't have their location in their bios. Um, so an example with Action Plus, they're in New Jersey. They have uh, Mammoth o Ocean, Middlesex, and Mercer County in their bio. So it kind of just makes you more uh, relatable and have, you know, you don't want the wrong people contacting you for an area you don't serve. So it kind of goes without saying to kind of put your, your location in there. Something else that can really put you above and beyond is including a, little, a short little sentence about yourself. Um, for Blue Marlin, for example, they just have a quick little sentence about their, uh, you know, their company, Samantha down here, she includes that she is a boy mom, wife, dog, lover, adventurer, living the Wyoming, Wyoming dream. So something to make you a little bit more relatable. Um, it definitely can put you out there, it definitely can get you to connect with someone that you might not think of a connection with. Um, just including little tidbits like that can really, can really help you. Does anyone have all five already in their profile? We need some rock stars here. <laughs> well, if you can, try to add that uh, today or you know, whenever you get a chance. And you know, it really will put you a step above uh, the, rest of, the rest of the company. Some best practices for social. Um, response time. My suggestion would be less than four hours. So if someone reaches out to you through um, you know, commenting or messaging, anything like that, you want to get back to them in less than four hours. Um, a lot of big companies, their response time is 24 hours. Um, we don't really go by that. I mean, if someone reaches out to us by end of business day, I mean, it's, it's something to keep you top of mind for your customers. Me personally, I would go for someone that's responding to me faster than someone that's responding to me a day later. Um, so I would definitely try to keep to the four hour window. Posting cadence. Um, so aiming to post at least twice a week. So to keep yourself relevant, and out there twice a week is definitely the sweet number at least. Um, that's kind of why we put together that social calendar. We have two posts a week at least, sometimes three, to kind of get you and your name out there in front of your followers. So if you have, you know, some people aren't gonna remember you if you know you're, you're not posting or you're not in their face all the time. So at least twice a week, um, that's a perfect, a perfect window for us. Liking, commenting, and replying to your followers. So engagement is huge. People want to know that there's someone on the other side of the screen. So if someone is commenting on your post and you're not answering or you're not replying to them, it really could be a deterrent for them. Um, so a couple of studies I've seen, if you are communicating with your followers, replying to them, getting back to their messages, um, it definitely goes a long way. Keeping your pages PG, um, definitely I feel like it goes without saying, but I have seen some 
agents or people who have not posted appropriate content to, to their business pages. Um, I have some stories, but um, you know, keeping it relatable to to your uh, followers. I mean, you don't want to be posting something about I don't know something so random. I mean, keeping it family related is fine. Keeping it business related is perfect, but nothing um, nothing kind of crazy. I think that kind of goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't mic'd, I'm was just kidding. Um, no, I have seen a lot of um, inappropriate um, postings or um, just something so totally crazy where it's, I mean, you got to think this is your business profile. This is, this is your business, your small business owners, basically. So this is something that you want, you want to be proud to show off and you want to be, um, you know, relevant in, in people's eyes. So um, I kind of want to take the time now to really dive more into the social calendars if you guys are interested. Um, and we can even do a demo of, of a posting if you'd like. Um, or we can walk through doing it together on your own profiles if you'd like. So I have here, let me go back to it. So I'd just like to show you how easy this can be to post to your Facebook. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Could did, could they see the calendar before? When I screen when just I should. Now? Yeah. No. Oh. So I just have to, if you want it to go up and press it. I just have to see no, it. I want to put it on the screen. You do want? Yeah. To? That's fine. Okay. Can I? Oh sure sure. Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, so for example, if we wanted to, actually let me go to Workplace and show you guys how to find the calendars. Pretty simple. Does everyone, is everyone familiar with Workplace? Yes, okay. Okay, so if you're looking for the agent version, oh, sorry. It'll be in the Go Social group on Workplace, which uh, anyone can join. But you'll be able to find each uh, monthly calendar. It's going to be pinned to the top of the page. So it's right here, right at the top here. Um, it's a PDF version, but if you click here, it'll say um, to visit OneDrive, which is where we house all of the pieces of content. So you'll want to click there, and it will take you to a folder for that month. Um, so if we go to, let's see which one we want to post today. Um, tomorrow is, or tomorrow's the 15th. So the 50th anniversary um, post, which if we scroll down, this is what we're going to post for tomorrow, the 15th. Um, so we're going to want to go into the, ca uh, the folder here and look for the 50th anniversary story. Click on it. Here's the creative. Um, we'll download it to our computer. And then we'll go back to our calendar, or our calendar and copy the post the post copy, go to our Facebook. I'm not gonna actually post, but I'll just set it up. We're gonna paste it, select a photo, and upload. So this is a great opportunity to add some hashtags or tags. So if we go back to our page here, we have some recommended hashtags. Um, in the parentheses, we have your team, your state, uh, your city. So if you wanted to insert you know, real estate C21 affiliated, um, this would be the, the opportunity to do that. 
Um, I definitely would not recommend using more than three hashtags in a post. Hashtags are a really great way to get your posts um, into that hashtag space. Or if someone's searching for specific hashtags, a great way to get your, your post into that mix. But I definitely wouldn't go overboard with the hashtags. It can get a little clunky um, and not so visually appealing. So if we wanted to post a hashtag here, C21 affiliated, um, that's what we would do. And then we would just hit post. Um, if you look underneath here, boosting your posts, this is referring to advertising on Facebook, uh, paid advertising. So if you are doing paid advertising and you want to boost it, more than welcome to. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it took me 15, 20 seconds to, do, to copy and paste that. So it's more about um, downloading and copying and pasting all that content. You can do this ahead of time and schedule your posts out. Um, I know Facebook allows you to do that, Instagram not so much. Um, but we really created this so you can have all the content for that month and have everything scheduled out for you so you don't have to think about it. I mean, you can always add in your own little things here and there, but um, essentially it's supposed to be plug and play for you. Yeah, on Workplace or on? Uh... Yeah, I can go in 21 online too. So right here, this is Workplace in the Go Social group. Yeah, so 21 online, when you log in here, Workplace is in the top right corner, but it's also in Brand Studio. Do you know how to get to Brand Studio? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's in the asset library. Every month they're added in there. So Brand Studio. Libraries, asset library. And there, this is a zip file for you. So you can download all the assets right to your computer on 21 online as well. Something else that I don't know if you all are aware of are the templates that we have on 21 on uh, the Brand Studio. We do have social media templates, which all the information will feed from your Dash profile into 21 Online into these templates. So where I just went was um, create general templates, which brought me to this page. And then I click on the three dots. And then I search this drop down for social media. So all of these templates, um, they might not all be available to you based on your profile and dash, but a lot of them will be. Um, you can essentially just add in your own images, hit create, and you'll have your um, company name, your information, your, um, your phone number, anything that's in Dash will feed into here and kind of have your contact information at the bottom. So once that's created, you just download it and then you can re-upload it onto your social medias. So we have a lot of little templates for, for social media here. So the only difference between the broker version and the agent version will be a couple of recruiting posts. So um, I know it might be sound a little odd that they're a little bit different, but the brokers really want to focus on recruiting, where agents want to focus on being that local community expert um, and kind of connecting with your customers. So having the different types of content can really allow you to get into that space and um, you know, connect with, with people in your community. So while I'm in Brand Studio, does anyone have any um, issues with Brand Studio or have, need any clarity on finding anything in here? Um, I do work really closely with Brand Studio, so I can answer any creative questions that you have. Yes? When you're doing the posting, do you go like to the public Facebook page or friends or? That's all depending on you. I mean, do you have a business profile, a business page on Facebook? Yeah. So if you have that, that's where I'd recommend posting on your business page. Um, if you want to do it on your personal page, that's up to you too. Um, but to kind of keep things separate, it might be a better idea to do it on your business page. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. So, yeah. So when you create your business page and you're say like you're creating it through your own profile, it kind of feeds in. They kind of connect a little bit. But once you're posting on your business page, it doesn't go to your personal feed. Right. Right, yep. So if you don't have a business page, I definitely recommend getting one, just to kind of keep things a little bit separated. Um, and you also, you know, depending on how you post, if you post personal stuff, um, you don't want to be posting it on your business, your business page. Um, so yeah, does anyone have any other questions I can use? Yes. I was going to say, it's a demographic thing. Um, a lot of older, not older, but for, like you said, 40 and up. <laughs> I, don't want, uh, I know, I said I got to watch it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, about 40 and up, outside of that millennial kind of range, um, they use Facebook a lot. However, we are seeing a huge, like in the 90s, uh, of people that use Facebook for their home search. Um, so a lot of people are still generating leads through Facebook, um, but a lot of people younger in like the younger millennial, Gen Z, they're using Instagram. Um, so if you did want to use Instagram, that would be the next platform I suggest. Um, TikTok is definitely not great for that type of thing, <laughs> or Snapchat, um, definitely Instagram. Um, Instagram, you can add a link in your bio. It's called a link tree. Um, essentially, it's one link that brings you to multiple links that you add yourself, um, where you can say you have five listings, but you can't put five links in your bio. So you want to put your bio up there as your link tree, which I can show you. And um, in that, in that, um, in that link, you can have multiple links in there. So then you can drive people, see the link in my bio and look for this link type thing in your comment, in your uh, caption. Oh, let me. Is that by going to the link tree? Yes, so it's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E. And I can show you the Century 21 link tree if that's more helpful. So you can kind of see how it works. Yes. So this is the Century 21 link, link tree right here. So this link, if you open it, it brings you to multiple different links, which is really nice if you, you know, are posting one post a day that says, see the link in my bio for this listing. And then the next day, see the link in my bio for my website. You can have multiple different links in this, web, in this link tree. So you don't have to keep changing the link in your bio to accommodate the post that you're putting out there. So it's really simple to sign up for a link tree. It's free. Um, and it's really easy to change the different links that you put in there. So once you log into your link tree, you can add a new link. You can delete a link. Um, you can see how many, you can see reporting, how many people have clicked on that link. Um, and then you can move them around. So I can move this down here if I didn't want it on top. And then it should reflect in here. So I these two just swapped. Yes. 
Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. So you can even, you know, this is a great way to just keep all of the important links in one spot. Yep. What are the word keyword or what phrase would get them to just click in initially? You've got your signature block, you're trying to get them to click in. What, what is the catchy thing that people will click on? See the link in my bio. When you're posting something, if you're posting a picture, or a creative, you write your caption, the last sentence. See the link in my bio for more. And then bio is the? Bio is? Is the actual thing that, like, is that highlighted? No, what, so. What is it? Where do they, that click right there, that phrase? No, so. The clickable link that gets them to take action, that's what I'm asking. Yep, I'm trying to find an example. So you want to, Right here. This is the copy. This says, for more 50th anniversary stories, visit the link in our bio. So just keeping that piece of copy there, people will then look for the link in your bio, which is this link tree. So nothing. What phrase works best for that? That thing to get them to click that. Because that still has to be interesting, that thing right there. So like you mean, copy. you want. This. So to look interesting. Yeah. What, what's the key to label that to get it to come over? You, you can't label That's just this. Your it's going to be, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So, no, nothing, you can't change that. So, C21 Social is our Linktree um, profile name. So, it'll be Linktree slash okay. your name. Just that. I can't do anything. No. Jazzy with that. No. So this is, like I said, a really great way to just keep all of your websites in one spot, uh, really easy. S a way to add, I don't know if everyone knows how to add a bio in their profile, but you'll just hit edit profile, and then you'll insert your website in, your, in that section there. Yeah. Yeah. You can add that link tree right to your signature. Just just copy it. Yep. Mhm. Mm yep. You could have a redirect URL to go like something to that, correct? What do you mean? Like uh This guy is nuts.com and they would re it would redirect to that URL. And I would still get you the same way. I'm just I'm making something up. Yeah. Well, there is actually another website called um, Bitly. I don't know if you've ever heard of, yeah, yeah. yeah, Bitly. You can customize the back half of your, of that link if you wanted to. So you can make it say whatever you like. But Linktree, I think, is a really good way to keep everything in one spot for your, for your uh, profile, uh, in your profile instance. As what? Uh, Bitly is not the same. Bitly, you can just customize, um, like if you have a really long URL and you wanted to make it shorter and something that people can remember or type in really easily, Bitly shortens links and, and makes it customizable. Linktree, you can host multiple links in one spot. B-I-T dot L-Y. Bitly.com. So for example, if I wanted to take this link for Brand Studio, and let's say it's too long and I wanted to shorten it, I would, on my Bitly account, hit Create, put my long URL in here, hit Create, and then this is now my shortened URL. And you can change that. You can change from the slash all the way to my cursor. You can change that to whatever you want it to say. So for example, if you wanted it to say, it would say bit.ly.com slash my name. Oh, well, it's taken. Lauren, one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, still taken, but <laughs> you get the you get the point. You can change it to whatever you'd like as long as it's you know open. Um, so that would be easy for you to give someone say, oh, look at my listing. It's at bitly dot or bit dot ly slash four five six Main Street. I mean, you could change it to whatever you'd like, just so it's easy to to remember. But that's another good solve. And that's, a free tool. that's free. Yep, it's free. I mean, you can pay for different tiers, but it's free for, for the main purpose. So, yep. But I would definitely recommend taking those five different pieces to up upgrade your profile as a first step. So doing a nice formal profile picture, engaging with your followers, putting in your contact information in your bio, and adding a link to your website definitely will put you put you out there. So I have, um, if you ever have any questions about the calendars or if you want to be added to our social this week email, um, let me know and I can I can get you added. So any other social questions I can answer. We have ten minutes or nine minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know that there's automatic filters and there's automatic filters. Yep. Um, is, there, is there something that we should be doing? Should we be trying to get more of our clients on that site? Or, I mean, we, we typically don't have a lot of followers on the Facebook page, but I don't know if really there's that much of a presence. I would focus your energy on your own, right. on your own stuff. Um, I mean, it's great if you want to show them support, but if you're, if you, I feel like you guys don't have that much time to, to be doing a bunch of different stuff on social, so you want to get the most out of the time that you do have, which would be to promote your own, your own listings, your own business. Um, so that's where I would focus your, your energy on. Yep. So posting in, generally I say Google three times a week. Yep. Yes, I would recommend doing the same content from Instagram and Facebook. Okay. But still like a minimum or ideally go twice a week. Yeah. At least that's great if you're doing three, but at least twice. You could even throw in some of the, the content that we have if you wanted to yeah. post more per week, but whatever, yeah, that's that's totally fine. But is it, you don't want to do every day, do you? Or like five times a day or you just want to pop up? No. I would if you're gonna do every I would do every day but no more than once a day if you're going to post a lot. Um, you don't want to post more than once in a day. Right. Yeah, because you don't, you want to be out there, but you don't want to be, I don't want to say annoying, but you know, like, you don't want to bombard people with your stuff all the time. You definitely want your face out there. But something I could suggest too is maybe posting, if you have two posts in a day, or you want to post twice a day, maybe post a story instead, a post and a story. Right. So that's another way to kind of Post content without posting well, posting content. Stories on both Facebook and Facebook. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. What are your thoughts? So Facebook is really good for generating leads. Um, you don't necessarily need to have as many likes or followers on Facebook. It's really a good tool to generate those leads. Um, Instagram is kind of, in my opinion, where you want to be. That's where you're going to connect with your followers and they're going to send you messages. Like that's that's the platform I would use the most. Um, Facebook, I know it is really, you know, a lot of people are on it in the that kind of generation, but um, they're not going to reach out as much as people would on, on Instagram. So if you want to be relevant anywhere, I would do it on Instagram. Is that helpful? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yep. 
So I know exactly what he's talking about. These four little circles here are saved stories. So what you want to do, if you wanted, uh, you can make a listing story um, bucket, if you will. Um, you, can do, you can't do this on, on a computer. You have to do it on your phone. But essentially, you would add a new story bucket and title it listings or, or uh, new agents or, or whatever it is. You would post your story on your profile, and then you can add it to this bucket. Well, it will not disappear. You can keep this forever. So people can revisit this over and over and over again. So for example, this saved bucket is in the news. This is from 48 weeks ago, if you see at the top here. 48 weeks ago, 46 weeks ago, we posted this to our story. And it's saved, because we put it in this bucket. So you can, yeah. Mm -hmm. there, then you have to post something, then you can add it to the Yep. So number one would be to create a bucket. Okay. Number two is to post to your story. Number three is to save it to that bucket. Perfect. Yep. So I don't know how many of these you can make, but I know it's more than 10. I think it's up to 10 you can make save stories. But I know people that have stuff in that in their saved stories from a thousand weeks ago i mean if, if it's something it's important to keep on your story but you don't want it to be a post make a bucket yes yeah, so you make the name and then you have to upload a picture to be front and center mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're not on my, you know, it's like they don't want to see my name and go away. Yeah. Does that help people then, does that raise human status? It, the only thing hashtags do are help people find posts that have that hashtag. So for example, if I'm searching a hashtag, I'll do it right now. Um, hashtag real estate. There's 61 million posts with the hashtag real estate. I know that's a little, um, little generic, but if you wanted to do, let's, I'll just pick one, C21 affiliated, 3,000 posts. So what that does is if I'm a home buyer and I'm searching um, the hashtag um, Chicago real estate, that helps me narrow down what I'm looking for. Um, it's more of a keyword search. So right here with C21 affiliated, we're going to find 3,000 posts that have that same hashtag. So if you want more eyeballs on your posts, you might want to, your hashtag is fine, maybe adding C21 in there, or, so, or real estate, um, that, could, that could get more eyeballs on it. If you have a listing and you want eyeballs on it, real, hashtag real estate, hashtag C21 real estate. People that are looking for real estate are going to search those hashtags, and then they're going to come across your listing, and then they're going to reach out to you. So it's just another way to get your posts out there. So I find with Instagram, that's how I get um, more people to unfollow me. Yep. Because they'll click on the hashtag and click the unfollow, um, you know, certain hashtags. Yep. Um, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, crap, I get 10 new followers. Yeah. I didn't read anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. It's not a bad thing, but it's it's <laughs> it's not something it's not something I recommend. Um, for bio, contact information, name, website. Maybe a short little blurb about well, if it's an office, it's different. But if it's your personal, something that you're interested in, um, something to make you more personal. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. In this context that we're talking about, um, is that correct? Can he read more posts or is only stories? Only stories. Okay. Only stories that you post, yeah. you can save to that bucket. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if anyone doesn't have any more questions, um, I have cards up here if you want to take my information and reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, but thank you, everyone. Um, hope you learned something. <laughs> thank you.